Hello and welcome to the Young Orthopod. In our previous video, we discussed the types of nerve injuries and its classification. You can find that video with the link in the description. Today we will discuss the Wallerian degeneration and the regeneration of a peripheral nerve following a nerve injury. When a nerve is disrupted, the cut ends retract due to elasticity of the endoneurium and different changes are seen in the proximal and the distal segment. After a peripheral nerve is injured, a coordinated sequence of events occurs to remove the damaged tissue that ultimately initiates the regenerative process. The reaction proximal to the point of detachment is called primary or retrograde degeneration. The proximal segment is generally reduced in diameter due to loss of functional connectivity to the end organ muscle and the ensheathing Schwann cells. Consequently, the conduction velocity of the injured nerve is reduced. Microscopically, the degree of damage sustained by the proximal segment and the neuronal cell body depends on the distance of the zone of injury from the cell body. If the zone of injury is far from the neuronal cell body, the Schwann cells degrade and the axonal degradation may extend just to the adjacent node of Ranvier. However, if the zone of injury is near or adjacent to the neuronal cell body, then the neuronal degeneration may extend all the way to the cell body to cause neuronal cell death. If the nerve cell body survives, the nucleus migrates to the periphery of the cell and cytoplasmic elements like nissl granules and endoplasmic reticulum undergo chromatolysis. The cell survival is dependent upon the Schwann cells and trophic molecules present in the vicinity. The distal portion of the axon, which is disconnected from the cell body, undergoes granular disintegration of the cytoskeleton and exoplasm over several days to weeks. This process of degeneration distal to the point of injury is called secondary or Wallerian degeneration which begins hours after injury. In Wallerian degeneration, the distal stump degenerates. The resulting fragmentation and shrinkage of the myelin sheath parallels the axonal degenerative changes. The endoneural mast cells release chemical mediators like serotonin and histamine, which causes the migration of greater number of macrophages by the seventh day. These macrophages clears the axonal and myelin debris to prepare the distal stump for reception of the outgrowing axonal sprouts. Schwann cells multiply to fill the area previously filled by axons and myelin sheath. This complex sequence of degeneration is generally completed by two months, and by this time, endoneural tubes and Schwann cells are all that remain. Axonal sprouting from the axonal stump may be seen as early as within the first 24 hours after the injury. These axon sprouts begin to grow towards the endoneural tube filled with Schwann cells distal to the point of injury under the influence of neurotrophic substances contained within the distal nerve tissue. The fate of regenerating neuron and the final outcome depends on multiple factors. In less severe injuries, without disruption of endoneural and Schwann cell sheaths, the axonal sprouts may pass readily along their former courses, and after regeneration, the surviving cells innovate their previous end organs. On the other hand, the more extensive injuries with complete disruption of the entire nerve, with wide separation of the ends of the nerve, and with 
regenerating fibers obstructed by extensive scar tissue result in little or no return of the function. Similarly, after a non-congruent repair, malaligned axonal sprouts grow into the epineural tissues and reach a blind end or grow into inappropriate tubules to establish connections that are non-functional. With the recovery from the injury in the cell body, the edema begins to subside, the nucleus migrates towards the center of the cell and the nissel substance begins to reaccumulate. So this was a brief idea about valerian degeneration and the neuronal regeneration. If you like this video, please tell us under the comments below. And for more interesting stuff in orthopedics, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back with another video in orthopedics. See you soon.